Hey, everyone, and well, 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 Canada, once again, punching way above its weight and showing to be at the top of the field. For what, you ask? Well, in being very authoritarian and dictatorial. Yeah, not exactly something to be proud of now, is it? Headline out of the Westphalian Times, Oxford University, Canada ranks among highest in the stringency of government measures near China and Cuba. The COVID-19 government response tracker from the Oxford University suggests that the stringency of lockdown measures in Canada ranks nearly as high as those of communist China and Cuba. It's reported by Samuel RZ, May 5th, 2021. And of course, as one would expect, considering the very real fact that Justin Trudeau himself, the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, who now runs this country, although in a minority position or status, I'll add, with the rest of the parties going along to get along, I'll add that as well. So keep that in mind, folks. But yeah, we know, based on what he said himself, that Justin Trudeau is a big, huge fan of China's basic dictatorship. Trudeau's meeting last week with a group of Toronto women was an example. Even with Sun TV watching for any slip, he was asked which country he most admired and referred to China. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted uh, that I find quite interesting. Trudeau's rivals pounced on that, saying it proves he admires dictatorship. Which is basically admission that, yeah, he loves himself some communism, right? Yeah, and don't even get me started on Trudeau being a big fan of the Castros or the Cuban regime, right? I, I don't even like to get into that stuff because people in Canada, right, especially Trudeau's opponents, can really go pretty wild and really ramp up the sensationalism when you're talking about the Castros and the Trudeaus, right? But anyways, let's move beyond that and deal with what we actually know to be factually true. And that is that Trudeau has admitted words that came out of his own mouth that he is a huge fan of China, China's basic dictatorship and that he no doubt sees that model as something that he would like to adopt in Canada. And very few Canadians are defying him. The staggering figures from the OXCGRT were originally reported by Cosman Serza from True North. Oxford's OXCGRT quantifies the stringency of governmental COVID restrictions by looking at a variety of variables such as school closures, travel restrictions, workplace closing, restrictions on gatherings, and more. Canada obtained a stringency score of 75.46, slightly behind China's 78.24 and Cuba's 79.63. United Kingdom obtained a score of 61.11 as the country is in the midst of a gradual reopening. The United States obtained a score of 56.94. Countries with scores higher than Canada include Algeria, Iran, Turkey, Venezuela, Argentina, and others. Canada has kept on strict lockdown measures as many industrialized countries are in the midst of reopening their economy. Canada's poor position today is largely explained by the failed vaccine rollout. <laughs> I would add a little bit more, but let's just stick to what's contained within this article. The Trudeau government wasted a lot of time by trying to secure doses from an unreliable pharmaceutical company linked to the Chinese Communist Party, CanSino Biologics. The CanSino vaccine later turned out to be a dud, and Canada never received a single dose. Despite CanSino's tied with the Chinese Communist Party, early on in the pandemic, the Trudeau government decided to enter negotiations regarding clinical trials with CanSino rather than AstraZeneca, a reputable pharmaceutical company based in the United Kingdom. The failed negotiations with CanSino and the lack of proactive agreements and purchase orders with Pfizer or Moderna made Canada rapidly fall behind in the vaccination campaign. Well, I mean, that's just one in a long string 
of failures by the Trudeau regime in this country. And yeah, there's lots, right? They're piled up at this point in time. Anyways, folks, that's the end of the article. Pretty uh, short and to the point, but I would definitely agree that Canada, I mean, we're in a terrible, terrible, terrible place, right? And yeah, this is what happens. When your goals are based on ideology and driven by that ideology or more about control than actually doing the right thing in a multitude of ways. Not, to, not just in terms of getting beyond COVID-19, but while respecting Canadians' fundamental rights and freedoms simultaneously. In both areas, the Trudeau liberal regime has failed miserably. I'll place a link to this article in the description of the video. I'm moving on to the next one. Canadian Libertarian, I love liberty.